In just three days, voters will witness the first direct comparison of Republican presidential candidates in a forthcoming debate. Interestingly, two out of the three Florida candidates will not be participating, including the frontrunner, a former president currently facing four indictments, Donald Trump. There are indications that Trump is considering alternative programming during the debate. Miami Mayor Francis Suarez, despite reports indicating he falsified his qualification for the debate, will also be absent. On the other hand, former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, known for his leadership in a traditionally blue state, embarked on a campaign in South Florida's Trump DeSantis stronghold. Christie engaged with a diverse political audience in South Florida on Friday, and subsequently sat down for an interview. During the interview, Chris Christie commented on the unfolding strategy for Wednesday night's debate. A recently revealed memo from a PAC supporting Ron DeSantis suggests a strategy of defending Trump and attacking opponents, which Christie finds questionable. He questions the wisdom of running against Trump while defending him in his absence, implying that such a tactic seems more aligned with aspiring for a vice presidential or cabinet position rather than a presidency. He emphasizes that challenging the frontrunner is the essence of a presidential race. Christie also criticizes the campaign strategy of Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, particularly a memo that has been circulating. He believes that if a campaign relies on frequent process-focused stories about internal machinations, it raises concerns about the candidate's ability to manage the complexities of the White House. When asked about his strategy for the debate, Christie outlines a straightforward approach, responding directly to questions and challenging statements that he deems detrimental to the country or the party. He expresses his commitment to being authentic and honest, aiming to provide informed answers that empower voters to make informed choices. Shifting the focus to local issues, particularly in Miami, the interviewer highlights Christie's visits to Cuban-American restaurants. Despite not explicitly discussing Cuban and Latin American issues during his campaign stops, Christie asserts that his stance is consistent wherever he speaks. He reiterates his belief in a free and liberated Cuba, criticizing the oppressive regime and President Obama's approach to Cuba. Addressing immigration concerns, Christie reflects on Florida's immigration policies and the controversy surrounding transporting individuals from the border to sanctuary states. He acknowledges the cost implications of such policies and emphasizes the importance of being fair, honest, and not using people as political pawns. Christie also calls for states to stand by their declarations and accept the consequences of their decisions. The conversation touches on the sensitive topic of abortion, referencing Florida's recently passed restrictive abortion law. Christie, a pro-life advocate, emphasizes that each state should have the autonomy to make its own decisions on this matter. He hopes for a consensus to develop among states, potentially leading to a consistent national policy, but underlines the importance of hearing the voices of individual states and their citizens. The interview concludes by delving into the gun rights issue, particularly in light of mass shootings like the one in Parkland, Florida. Christie underscores the challenge of finding a balance between Second Amendment rights and gun safety. He believes in focusing on mental health issues and providing better mental health treatment. He advocates for increased vigilance in monitoring signs of potential violence and emphasizes the need for enhanced school security. In summary, Chris Christie's appearance on this week in South Florida covered a range of topics, from campaign strategy and debate preparation to local issues like Cuban-American relations. Christie's pragmatic approach to these subjects underscores his commitment to open discussions and informed decision-making, immigration, abortion, and gun rights.